Hey, shite, doesn't it burn? But nobody told Skeeter that when he disposed of Piney's body. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Entertainment. It's time to review Sons of Anarchy, Season 4, Episode 11. 12. 12. This one is called Burnt and Purged Away, and it's the last we see of Piney. He does go up in flames. And I guess Clay's journey, Clay's... Ride at the top of the table, holding the gavel, also goes up in flames. Clay's 18-year run as president is over. It's all over. And it's kind of poetic that the guy that ends that journey is the guy's son who Clay's just killed. Well, and the fact that Clay did take out his wife as well four seasons well, what, ago. What I would say is he's still president. Jax hasn't cut the patch off yet. That's for a few episodes' time, so... As of right now, that please. patch is hanging on by a thread. Aye, it is. It is. Talk about hanging on by a thread. Last appearance of Piney. That is your first fact. Piney's dead. He's been dead for a bit. What? Well, it feels like he's been dead for like half it. I actually think it's incredible how long Kurt Suter managed to drag this out without it actually be feeling dragged out. Yeah, like, I'm also, Piney's body's been sitting there for about ten episodes. I'm also surprised. Well, I wouldn't say ten. Five. Like, I'm also, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No. Four. I'm also surprised that we never really got to see any flashback scenes with Piney. But Suns didn't really use flashback scenes. All they did was yeah. have JT speak. If you don't use book. flashbacks, there's no there's no much sense just using one. I think if you're gonna commit the flashbacks, Plus, you need to whip it multiple. If ones. you plan on telling the story with a prequel show, then <laughs> Who needs <laughs> flashbacks? You may as well save all the content. Yeah, or for maybe that. maybe Kurt Suter's produced all these Flashbacks, and he's going to ink them all together. That's what I'm saying. First uh, nine, it's going to happen. All right, fact number two, Major, ma Major? Mayor Hale was likened to Mayor Hale, uh, Mayor Quimpty and Simpsons. So there we go. Thoughts on that? Simpsons reference. Simpsons? Fucking Simpsons? Stupid bastard. Honestly, the I can fuck it. Simpsons. The Simpsons is so overrated. I might, might get that out there. See, Homer choking Bart for the millionth time. That gets old. Er <laughs> Uh, it's, I mean, it's a decent show, but yeah, it's overrated. Like. It's nowhere near Prime Family Guy. Not in a month of fucking Sundays. As I think I prefer Family Guy, like, to be honest. No, I, I look at... Right, we're going off topic here, but just to wrap it up quickly, I think Family Guy has got a host of characters that could carry an episode. I look at The Simpsons and I'm like, who carries an episode? Yeah, once you take Homer, it's like... Like, I think the best Family Guy episodes are probably like with Bra Brian and Stewie. Could you imagine a Simpsons episode? Oh, well, I mean, I do like Peter Griffin, I'm not going to lie. No, I like Peter too, but I mean, Quagmire could carry one. Joe, my name is Cleveland Brown. He, he could fucking carry one. But I tell you who couldn't carry one, Skeeter. His Skeeter, and <laughs> he's not going to get a chance to carry any episodes going forward. You know what? Fair play to actually getting this guy back for this, like, one scene he was in, or two scenes he was yeah, in. Yeah, there were not any more bodies that need burned. Clay and Jax just tend to bury them. Yeah, true. So there's, right. no, no, there's no further need for Skeeter. Nope. But we but still have Skeeter Jean, the best Chris Hansen impersonator on YouTube. You anyway, let's get into the episode. Yep. Opie kicks off, he's rapping Gemma's door. He's like, Damn, look at your face. Who did this? Clay did this. What do you mean, who did it? I mean, it's fucking he obvious. Knows, he, he knows who did it. <laughs> Unser's right? already filled him in. She, he Unser's already had that church meeting with him. He, yep. He wants to know why, right? And she's like, historic shit. And he's like, Yeah, but why? And then she doesn't tell him. Is, is Opie not within his reason here to, like, Whip out a gun and tell because he Gemma tried to cover up his dad's death. Make no mistake about it. But she did that. Yeah, can we again a little bit of consistency would be better. Why is Opie not equally as pissed? All right, maybe not equally because Gemma didn't kill Penny and Clay did. But I mean, why is Opie not a little bit annoyed here, Gemma? I do not think Gemma's came out of this whole thing smelling a fucking right, roses. Like, aye, like everyone has. Like, just, oh, poor Gemma. Gemma's the victim. Clay's the big, bad, evil guy. And, I mean, I'm not defending Clay because he's done a lot of, you know, questionable shit. But, like, it's Gemma has just come out of this as, like, a saint. What I would say is... Saint Gemma. The way he reacted to Unsort was reactionary. He literally just found Piney dead. Now, if Gemma followed him up, I'm I'm, I'm not suggesting that he would have re re like acted here like the way, the way he did in the previous episode. I think he still would have been fucking ape shit. But, like you said, just come out smelling of roses. Like... She wanted to cover it up. Unser clearly said that. Like Unser didn't want to cover up. He covered up because she wanted to cover yeah, up. Yeah, what did guns? What did Unser get a gun in his face? Clay, Clay killed, killed your old man. But uh, Opie kind of takes this. He's like, right, well, 
Unser said, if I go to Gemma, you'll see her face. That's proof it was clay. But, like, does Opie really need Gemma's face as, like, proof to, like, make him want to kill Clay for killing his dad? Well, I mean, you can't just take Unser at his word, can he? Unser's not exactly the cleanest cop ever. He's, made he's told a, a few lies in his well, lifetime. He's patched in, man. He can't take... Uh, I heard a couple of Jimmy's men could be uh, down the state there. <laughs> Aye, but if you, if you... I, I got a unanimous tip. <laughs> we can't trust one of your fellow unanimous son's members. Unanimous? If you can't trust one of your fellow son's members' word, then what can you do? Because Unser's patched in. Uh, Unser's first ten. You know what's mad, though? Clay knows everything's falling apart and he's pretending the gale and that. That's all right, big man, all right? Who Who actually... Who, what, what, who was established first? Unser? As a cop and charming or SOA? Honest. When did Un- I wonder when Unser arrived on the scene? Because we're led to believe that he knew Gemma for when she was... This may sound retarded, right? Could Unser be a decent bit younger than, like, you know, like, Piney, JT? But older than Clay? No, no, it could be a decent... Well, I mean... No, it, no, it could be, it could be like, Gemma's age, which, you know... Appearance-wise, he looks like a bag yes, of shite. but because he's got cancer, that's why he looks like a big bag of shite. No, he looks like a big bag of shite because he's considerably older. Is that why, though? Well, then, if we're talking actors and actresses, yes. The guy's like 79. Dayton Cali, born in uh, Dumfries, I believe. We make that fact. Fact of the day about Dayton Cali, anyway, right? Let's should, talk- should have patched him into Sam Glow. Let's talk about, let's talk about the guys uh, from Belfast. Sam Dean. Right, Galen and the, the guys show up. Jack shows up late and Galen's like, you must have more pressing matters, Jackson. Jackson's like, yeah, I'm over my child in the hospital. And like, yeah, exactly where I don't want to deal, deal with the cartel. Clay, you big fucking lying bastard. You said these guns would not be used nor for the border. And then like... Yeah, yeah. That, almost, that almost brought Galen and Jax together. He's not, yeah, he's not happy that the RPGs were used. And Clay's like, those guns saved my life, brother. And Jax is like, right, it's not going to happen. Romeo understands the need for discretion. Chibs then steps in. He's like, right... They need someone that that gets the IRA. He's like, these big guns only be used south of the border. It won't blow back on the Irish cause. Um, Galen kind of accepts this and walks out and looks like, right, we'll, we'll listen to Romeo and his wee speech tomorrow. What, what do you make of this? Is, is it all right for the IRA to sell guns and then be used in Mexico? Because I guess it's not going to be on the news as much, but if, if it's getting... But everyone knows the IRA. But you know what? As soon as you shady shit though. But as soon as you sell the guns, I mean, fuck it. I mean, the people that buy the guns are entitled to use them however they want. True. Are you, are you going to give them a discounted price? Yeah, you can only use these guns north of the uh, south of the border, so we'll give you them a half price. No, it's not how it works. But I get why it would blow back on the cause. Yo, no. If, if Galen's got such an issue with these kind of weapons, then why why are they making them? Why are they selling them? Well, those are headline making weapons, clear. No, but if that's the You're case, writing them. What? Galen's writing the headlines. Yeah, but my point is, like, if, if those weapons are headline-making weapons and bringing heat to the IRA, then why are the IRA even dealing in those weapons? Why don't they just continue sending over Glocks? I think the problem is, though, the fact that they used them. Let's be real. What the fuck else are they going to do with them? No, but, I mean, like, they used them up north. But the problem is they used them up north, but no one knows about that. Yeah, but if they're headline... If, I just think if the IRA and Galen are so worried about these weapons creating headlines, then should they not stay away from using these weapons? Those are headline-making weapons, Clue. Could be. Uh, Juice hears about this meat. He then texts uh, Lincoln's... Checking in. He checks in. He gives them the location. He's like, I don't care about Lenny Jano's privileges... Because Juan Carlos Ortiz just gave us our Irish cartel gun meat. And then Chibs is like, that's the shit in the rear view now, bravo. <laughs> and then it just cuts to the fucking intro. Well, Ju- Juice is Yeah, fucking- I don't get it. I mean, like, everyone in Sam Crow seems to think that same. That's, uh, they've done the hard work and that same. And by the end of this episode, Bobby and Juice are in jail and Clay's shot. Yeah. Piney, Piney, well, everyone knows Piney's dead and Opie's probably going to get a mayhem foot over his fucking head. But yeah. Club's right. just been cut in half. The, the the shit's in the rear few no the shit's in the front few mirror man. I know chips get it right and you're going hundred miles per hour into it. Yeah. You've got you've, full speed ahead. You've got to worry about it, man. Um Jack then runs into Gemma. Gemma's like, Oh Gemma, what happened to Opie? He's like, Oh Opie went up and checked the panty last night, confirming Gemma's what she thought that Opie did know about that Panny was dead, so yeah. Again, maybe is, is she a bit shocked here that Opie was a wee bit alright with her compared to it, but then she tells Phil to uh, find Opie. It's like, yes, ma'am. I mean, Gemma. See this whole gimmick of the prospects calling her fucking... Oh, no, see all the prospects for this stage, part for half-sack. I like half-sack. See the rest of them they are. 
Hot, they, don't, they don't deserve a patch. Even Rat Boy. I, 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 to, to me, Rat Boy didn't come across as a patch member. No. I know he did get he's, patched. He's the best at a bad bunch if we take away half sack, but that doesn't mean... But then again, that's pro- <laughs> Filthy Phil got... Fi- I mean, his, his extra large cut. His cut that's like a, a, a king duvet. Can we make a case, though, right, that it is near impossible for someone to show attribute and like leadership qualities and just like like the kind of attributes that you need and qualities that you need to be in the club to be patched in can you argue that it's different to show them as a prospect because basically you are the bitch boy you don't lead you don't make decisions you don't make calls you don't do anything other than just follow the fucking leader so can you make can you make a case that like the people that never get patched in, that it's impossible to tell we, that whether they would have made good uh, patched in members, or or do you think that the prospects just weren't that good? You know, I get the point, right? But I look at feel. I mean, Filthy Phil was patched in for like a season and a half. Was he really that good? No, he, he just felt he felt like a he still felt like a prospect. We're on a we're yeah. on a cut. Um, Jack then wants to reshuffle the club his own way because he calls over Bobby and Clay. I mean, and he... the, the only one, that, the only person who ever got patched in that actually felt like a member was Easy. True. Right. That's anyway, a totally different show. Anyway, big man. Anyway, I think uh, I would. True. All right. No, who were you going to suggest? I was going to suggest the fact that like Nestor actually got the final kill on an Easy. I mean, was that not? A, was that not a pretty big moment? Nah, to me, ne- Oh, piss off. We don't even see Nestor. As a member, he fucking puts it up, the cut on for two minutes. Justin Bieber? No, but how, how the hell can you determine whether Nestor... I don't want to talk about the Mines, Mines. No, me neither, fish. but the whole point was, it's like I, I don't think that the prospects have a chance to show that they're capable to the, the true extent of being a patch member because when you're a prospect, you basically just have to do whatever you're told and be dependable. Be dependable, right. This is what Jax wants the club to be. Bobby President, Chibs VP, Happy Sergeant Arms. I don't think many people can really dispute that. But no, the problem is here, he's he's saying this because he's leaving pretty soon after they close this deal. What about Clay? Is Clay leaving after this deal? I would No, s- Clay's leaving whenever his hands give up I on would him. say Clay's ga- 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 Clay's game plan's at the window at this point. He wanted to cash in so him and Gemma could retire. Him and Gemma's done at this. I mean, it's pretty much... I mean, it's hanging on by the same bit of thread as yeah, cuts. Yeah, m- maybe Clay needs less money now that Gemma's not an option. As long as you've got enough money to amuse yourself. I mean, realistically, I think Clay's game plan for episode one of this season is m- changed. It's like, it's all about... I mean, look at many people. He's killed since here and then. Honestly, Chibs then walks over, he's like, oh, what he's talking about? He's like, I oh, just patching everyone Nothing in. Nothing that involves you, Chibs. You wee bastard. But then Galen needs help at this orphanage. This scene was just weird. Like, Sam Crow arrive. Yeah, hold on. You're on about Jack. We'll talk about this orphanage scene in a minute because I really didn't like it. And i got to be honest, I think Sons of Anarchy has a bad habit of throwing in certain scenes like this. Fight scenes? Yeah. It, it reminded me of the mine scene in the, the dog kennel place. Yeah, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, yeah, the way Jax is talking about the, the new leadership roles and the new ranks, it's almost as if Jax is saying that him and Claire are getting out at the exact same time. Yeah. Now, let's say that they're not, because Jax is leaving imminently. And as far as I'm aware, Clay will have to stick around for a couple more years. So what is the roles once Jax leaves? Because Tig's, Tig's done. Tig's... Could, could Clay try and win Tig back? Could Clay say, yo, Tiggy, I need you as my VP? I couldn't see Bobby as VP, did Clay? Yeah, I mean, Bobby... Maybe Bobby could be VP to somebody else, but the, the fact that Bobby and Clay have just clashed heads, especially over the cartel, would Bobby make a good VP? And then, obviously, because... Because Happy wouldn't be... Because Chibs wouldn't be VP, that means would Chibs take the Sergeant at Arms role? But again... Chibs and Clay don't seem that tight. Chibs has always been in the, the camp of Jax. So it would be difficult to actually determine how the ranks would play out once Jax leaves, but in that initial period where Clay's still there as president. Like, who becomes VP and who becomes Sergeant at Arms? I think Happy's definitely one of them. But what one would he take? And I, I, I mean, if you can't have Tig and... I don't think Bobby would work well there, and I'm not too sure about Chibs. I mean, who does that leave you? 
Not many. I mean, Juice. Opie's at the windy, so he can't really be at the table with Clay. The question is, though... Well, like, at this point... Clay was more annoyed at Jax about, like, yeah, we don't really know if we're getting at this deal because the... He wasn't really like, here, yeah, you can't say this because I'm not getting it. Would Opie not make a good Sergeant Arms or VP at this point until Clay realises he knows the truth about Piney? Yeah, but the point is, Opie knows. So I said the Wendy. Maybe a few episodes ago, yes, but at this point, it's all done. So what you're saying is then, basically, Happy becomes Clay's VP and they promote Lardass and they put him as Sergeant Arms and Clay just hides behind them. Pretty and much, it's, right? It's big fat ass deflect. Now let's bullets. talk about this set uh, orphanage scene, right? So Jackson, Tig, Happy, and Chibs. Was, yeah, Chibs was there. Essentially, they just batter a few like the, the the help, the Irish guys. Yeah, basically. I think, oh, do get... you think do you think these scenes are included because it's like motorcycle culture? Like, they, like they do like these fist fights. <sighs> it's just lame. It, it, it's fro- some some people say SOA is very cringe, and I don't think it is. But I think scenes like this are cringe. This is like the walk- this are... is the Walking Dead's. Let's have a big, massive fucking shootout, killing walkers. These scenes didn't happen in Breaking Bad. No. See when you see, like, but see, I think it's part of motorcycle culture. I don't agree with it, but if I, it happens that often, and he's did it across two shows, it can't just be a coincidence. No, but I think you can. I, I think you can write certain stories or, 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 or plot purposes that require fights. Yeah, but this just didn't seem necessary. No, I uh, yeah, I think this is very. Uh, it's the highlight. Jax's, you know, he's he's a hothead. It's the. Increase the beef between Jax and Galen. Without this scene, Clay doesn't say to Galen that, oh, this is. That this lad deal, has a temper, Clay. That deals directly between us, Galen, big boy. Of course, Clay saying that. I don't Clay, give a shit about his democracy or whether Abel is kidnapped, Clay. It's all over for him, damn It's it. all about the rocket launchers, Clay, the headline making weapons. Nah, I didn't like this scene. Nah. Um, it but, was shit, let's be honest. Yeah, I, yeah, these fight scenes. I mean, that adds nothing. Fucking grown men getting into fights. Over nothing. O- over nothing. Over fucking nothing. Well, let's be real, right? Yes, it's because Jack. And then, we, oh, then you no, get... his son got adopted. He almost got kidnapped. Well, he did get kidnapped, almost adopted. I mean, there's better ways to handle it. I mean, what, what's Galen supposed to do? Drop all his fucking businesses, businesses that has a bit of relevance to Jack's kidnapping? Come on. Oh, Jax cares about the kids, so he's going to get into a fucking brawl with some guys right inside the crib. I mean, come on. Chibs fucking I mean, doing that, suplexes. Someone, <laughs> someone could have fell into the crib and crushed one of the babies, so they really don't care about them that much. Yeah, G- Gemma then goes up to the cabin, sees that Piney's gone. Uh, no, but look, you're talking about fights. I'm not saying you can't have fight scenes. Look at the towards the end of season two when you had the Sons versus Thingy's crew. Sabelle's crew. The Nords. Like, uh, loan. Loan. League of National. What about we're calling it like 10 million? No, but like that was a good fight scene. That's, that scene was necessary. That scene made sense. A lot of these fight scenes do not make sense. Yeah. Like, they make sense like story wise, did fans things, but in I, terms of the actual heat of the moment, it does not make I, sense. I think when that missing brick went, if there was a fight, and I know there was a punch thrown, but I think if a fight broke it, over the missing brick, that would have made sense because that's something that you should be fighting no, over. No, but it's not like it's a couple of punches. It's literally a full, fully blown fist fight. Aye, here. O- over what? Jack's seen a couple of babies and not liking it. I don't know. I thought I thought it was lame. It was lame, right? Unsaw tells Gemma that I pinned it on Clay, so go fuck yourself. The fight scene as well, by the way, in, in season one when they get the killer clown. Or the rapey clown? Aye, the rapey clown. And I have to kill your little dart. No, but I mean... Aye, so well, can I move on before you rape me? Yeah, but... <sighs> Aye, go for it. I mean, well, what about the season one fight? We're in season four, right? I'm Shit's just... hitting the fan. No, I'm just... That saying... clown's irrelevant. See unless Elliot's in the next scene and Clay's with the whip out a fucking poly docket with a knife in it? I don't want to hear about it. Why didn't they just blow up that clown with a rocket launcher? Can't headline, use them north of the border. It's a headline making weapon. No, I'm a, you can't move like, them in the amusement right, park. We'll, we'll, we'll move on, but my point is, like, I think some fight scenes are, are good, and I think some fight scenes make sense and should be in there. But then you just get some that are thrown in there just for the sake of having the fight scene. Right, let's talk. And about, I don't like them. Let's talk about how whipped Dunster is, right? Even though he's never even been in a relationship with Gemma, but she manipulates him, right? She tells him to go and undo everything you told Opie and say it wasn't Clay, and he actually and he attempts to, to do it. 
What a fucking tool. What the f- what? I mean, does this guy think that now Clay is at the picture that if he does everything Gemma asks him to do that he's going to be next this, in line? This would be like this would be like Gemma telling Clay in season three, oh, yo, go tell Sam Bell that O'Neill and <laughs> McGee weren't rats. <laughs> he's just telling me you fucking murdered. <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense, man. It honestly does not make any sense. Juice gets arrested, by the way. Bobby goes to prison. He, I mean, how would Unser even begin that conversation? Well, he does. We'll get that. We will. He does attempt to begin it. It's like, hey, Opie, I need to go over a few details, buddy. Uh, yeah, a few major details. I know. Would Opie just believe it? Opie would I, I think it. if Opie turned around and just shot Unser right in the head, it would almost just justified just for just fucking with him. All right. But anyway, let's talk about Bobby. He goes to see Otto. He's, he gets this like notepad. He's reading all these crimes that Otto's committed. What 19, the hell am I reading here, Arnold? Nineteen ninety-seven, two thousand and one, two thousand and two. Uh, Got me death, got me life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's shit I done for the club. We'll put it up for a poll whether it was justified this ratting. Um, but Bobby is under what arrest. What shit have you done for me? He's like Otto. What did you do? Otto, what did you do? Bob- you ratted? He's, he's used that line a few times. I mean, Bob. Bo- see when see when someone rats, Bobby freaks out as if someone just ate the last fucking cheeseburger. You ratted? I mean, did he real? Is it really ratting? Of course it is. It's still fucking rotten. Ah, no, I don't think so. No, it's rotten. No, but the club's fucking sc- The club has screwed over. The, the club has screwed over Otto, and this is the only way he's got to fight him back. We can say the club did, but it's fucking Bobby. Bobby told him horse shit. True, but Clay also shafted him. Hold on here. So see when, see when Weston and, and shite raped Gemma? Did, why, why didn't... What if some, see if someone turned around and said to Clay and Jackson, no, hold on here. They're rich. We can get into business with them and make money. Let's create an alliance. What What would Jackson Clear say to them? Probably X. Time for you to make a list. Whoever <laughs> said that. <laughs> no, there's a probably fucking Mister Mayhem them. Yeah. That, that that is ridiculous, man. But he gets dragged away. Uh, Otto sits there for twenty seconds. He's like, time for you to make a list. But no, it's mad. Like, see when you get see when you get put in prison. Like, see if you don't give up the club, like, and and you're doing favors inside. I think the club should at least give you the respect and treat you like they, they treat fellow patch members. But they treat the people inside like dog shit. No, they do. They really do, but... No, they do. I, <laughs> I, I actually don't even I mean, consider this rat and fail. Clay goes to the cartel, uh, says that here there's too much heat on us right now and that Jack's never going to leave Tara's side. Irish, let's keep hanging on the wraps. I'll deal with Tara. But then they're like, no, we'll deal with Tara. Make it look like an accident. So then he goes to visit Tara... We think Gemma thinks, oh shit, Clay's going to kill Tara because she finds out for filthy Phil. Clay essentially says that here, you're never going to give the letters to Jax, but I want peace of mind. And if you don't, I don't think you and Jax ever make it a charm. And so even if she gives the leverage that she's got, he's still, even at this point, he's still all right with the cartel killing. The line has been drawn. The line is drawn in the sand. It's almost as if, Tara's actually safer. She keeps on to the letters because then she's got a bit of leverage. Yeah. I mean, if she gives the letters up, she's got nothing. But essentially... I've got nothing left. Clay gets up, <laughs> leaves. Gemma can't believe that Gemma didn't... Yeah. But then, like, Clay told Filthy Phil his way in with Tara. He tried to tell me it was just, what... Pl- a killer, then walk out un- un- Unplugged her machine or whatever. Uh, Gemma then tells Clay that Opie has found out the truth. I love you, Clay. And it's all over. So at least she gave Clay a warning. He goes back to the clubhouse. He's like, uh, Tig... Where is everybody? He's like, I might need somebody tonight. I've got a feeling that something's going to go down. Those little specks, they're feeling a bit uh, adventurous tonight. Then Tig's like, uh, well, everybody is either away or dead. Kozik, Miles are dead. I think Jack's tracked down Ope. I uh, don't know where every, don't know where Piety is, but he jobs Clay. Does he job Clay? Here does Clay deserve this. I think Clay's deserved this at this point. I'm sorry. He's been shutting them out. But Tig doesn't know the half yet. That's what I would say. Tig's essentially saying no to him because, well, I mean, I guess he did beat Gemma, but, I mean, what would Tig have done if he knew, like, he, he's tried to kill Tara and Piney? I think you could make an argument that maybe Tig would have backed them. Would they if he knew the truth? I think he would have tried to help, Clay. Killing a patch member. Mm. Going after an old lady. Well, they tried to kill fucking Opie. Well, he's actually... Trying to kill a patch member going after an old lady. What's that sound familiar? <laughs> For these two. That's right up Tig's alley. That's right up Tig's alley. But, uh, yeah, Although he did feel guilty. He'd rather go up, he'd rather go up so. Venus Van Damme's fucking alley, wouldn't he? The wee freak show bastard. Anyway, right. Jax receives a phone call. He storms to the, the crematorium. Opie's there. 
But OP is being filled in by Unser. He's like, I need to talk to you about something. I'm not in the mood to talk, big man. Jack walks in, kind of probably wondering why Unser's there. Um, they Unser hug. was about to ask uh, OP if he could get Penny's seat at the table. He was. Two old guys, probably wreak a pish. But uh, Unser then leaves, realising, well, I can't really tell OP this right now while Jax is here, or else it would have made for a pretty poor refuel. Jax finding out all the truth. Throws the cut in. Damn. Piney's well, could done. have been two birds, one stone. Could have been, but Piney's... Also, you're not supposed to keep the cup. Maybe, but... Shotgun hole through it. Blown it. Shot to the heart. Well, we this do cut's a... too well, late. Will we do a Piney character spotlight? Probably one day. What would you rate the cat, the Piney character at this point? Probably like a 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10 for a big Piney Winston. Well, he, had, he had some decent moments, don't get me wrong. I did enjoy when he fizzered Leroy. Nugan, 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 nugan. Uh, you know, it would actually, like, even though he's a 6 out of 10, he is one of those characters, it would be hard to imagine the show without him because he's such an influence on it. No, I think he's got standout moments, but he's just not really there a lot, and, you know? No. He's not there enough. He's a background character. Kevin, he he, he, he will disappear for like five or six episodes and just not be there. Yeah, but yeah, no, I mean, like I said, some, I enjoyed the actor. Rest in peace, William Luckering. Uh... But yeah, let's move on. His luck yeah. ran out, sadly. Anyway, let's move into the final bit of this episode. And you know what, right? We can talk about uh, Piney being sent off to the to hell or heaven, wherever he was going. I'm going, I'm going to bet hell or a cringy fist fight. But I think the last like eight minutes of this episode redeemed anything that we thought may have been poor previously in the episode. Does it not? I um, the, the, I think from the moment they leave. With the, the confrontation between Opie and Jax and then the, the bike scene with Opie shooting out Jax's tires and then Jax trying to get any sort of vehicle that he can to chase down Opie. Truck, horse, motorbike. And then the, the confrontation with Opie and Clay in the clubhouse. I just even the montage though of like Bobby and Juice being in like cells right yeah, beside that's each great. other. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, th- this is, this is, I-, I think this is perfection. See, from the, the moment where they leave the, and I'm not saying like when they were in the cremation, it wasn't good, but I, I think that the last, like you said, eight minutes, this is, you, you can't do better than this. Uh, yeah, I, you, I think this is fucking peak. SOA, this scene. No, peak television. Aye, true, yeah. I, I don't think you can do better than it. I the, would say this is probably up there. Um, top 10 scenes of all t- for me I, I think the cliffhanger it's not even like a season you get it the, you get it the next week yeah so Jack's like you want to tell me what happened and Opie's like why don't you tell me you're Clay's boy Jack's like what you talking about Clay killed my old man did you know no Opa did, did you it. know no oh of course not <laughs> voice breaking and everything man hey Opa if Clay did this this is club Business, you know, we'll take it to the table. What table? You're out, remember? <laughs> down, 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 down. I wanna hunt like David. I wanna, I wanna be... kill me a giant man. <laughs> you know, you've got Opie riding in the fucking badass hair flying in the background. You've got uh, Jax trying to get Unser's straw. The, the starter was a bit fucked there, Jax. I mean, it's almost like Unser wants Clay to die. He purposely, <laughs> he purposely sabotaged his car so Jax couldn't use it. Unser had this. He played them all like a fiddle. Unser knew this was going down. He starts throwing the morning star thing at Jeepers <laughs> Creepers has at the fucking house. <laughs> he then grabs Skeeter's car or Hells even and he takes off and then hijacks someone else's bike and he gets there and Clay sees Opie arrive and then he bursts into the church and he's like, you're gonna die at the gavel, <laughs> and the the, the 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 sit down man is great. Someone's been lying to you, Ope. Lying to the fucking end, isn't he? Like <laughs> not even admitting it at this point. He's snookered. Honestly, what can Clay really say at this <laughs> so, point? Well, that's probably the only that's the only response he's got. Someone's been lying to you. <laughs> yeah, me. <laughs> Having Donna killed. Was that a lie to? Oh, come on, man. That's history. That that all settled. No, it's not. <laughs> No. That's that's a headline. That's a headline making dead clay. That doesn't get settled. <laughs> You're gonna die at the gavel. Don't I get to say anything here? Did my old man get to say anything? Will you blow a hole in his chest? Sit down. And then Jax runs in with a gun pointed at Don't make me shoot your brother. Don't make me shoot your bro. 
Um, Opie just chuckled, was like, ah, shit me anyway. My whole family's dead. My kids are pish. I'm going to be next to go. <laughs> it's <laughs> time to go. Un- unloads is two in clay. Um, and that's pretty much it. Then we get the... And then you see the, the SOA logo appear and Clay's just sitting there on the chair. Fucked. I mean, what an end. It's one of those, no, it's one of those endings where you just wish you'd never seen the show so you could watch it first time again. Uh, I mean, how great would it be if you could have just, like, erase your memory on certain shows and get to rewatch them again? Yeah. That'd be amazing. I, it's a very... Oh, I think this would... Think or, the, or we could just get... Good shows produced in 2023 that we're going to... It's a very... I think it's a very... very sim- get that. No, we don't get that. But it's a very similar scene to the Breaking Bad one with uh, Mike and Gomi in the desert. Obviously, I think this was done first. I'm not saying they copied it. But obviously in that one, I think there's a lot more people. But in terms of the cliffhanger for the next episode, it's done very similar. I can't really think of other, many other TV shows that have left an episode like this. There are like two shootouts that end it like that. Hank! No, Hank! Let him go! Don't do it! Don't do it, Hank. Great, great television. Uh, this was great, though. And, uh, yeah, phenomenal ending. Pro- is it the best ending to a son's episode? It probably Probably is. Probably is. I, I, I think this is one of my favourite scenes. It's probably the scene that I've watched the most out of any Sons of Anarchy scenes. Anyway, it is rating time, and, I mean, as much as I can say that the ending is not like an 11 out of 10... Is the episode perfect? No, it's not. But I still think it was very good. And I think the ending is damn brilliant. So I'll give it a 9 out of 10. I, I just can't really give it a 10. I, I, I thought the whole... I, I, I hated the whole scene when Jax goes with Gail and, and he gets introduced to these babies and it brings back memories to season 3. It, just, it didn't seem necessary well, to Jack, me. Really, you know, anyway, a fake fight scene and all that shit. But. I'll, I'll give it a 10 just to make it a 9.5 for the ending. But I think if it was just another generic... Yeah, but I mean, you can't really take things out. But say the ending doesn't exist and it's just another generic ending... And it's probably like a, what, an eight, seven, seven and a half, somewhere in that uh, mark. But here, like you say, if something's got the best ending of a TV show episode ever... It has to bump up the rating a wee bit. It does. Exactly, guys. But anyway, and it was that good, it spawned the first ever two-part finale in the show. Damn. Damn. But anyway, it seems like this, that for me, solidifies season four as the best. But anyway, till next time... Can there be any doubt that season four is the best season? Can you make an argument? What I would say is, um, is there, well, what is what se- what seasons do you think can come close to it? Mm, two, two. You know, I, I I need to properly think about it, but I think season four does an incredible job considering, like, it's not like they kill off an insane amount of main characters. You know, a lot of TV shows hinge on deaths. This season doesn't really. Yeah, it's more the following seasons where everyone just starts dropping like flies. Yeah, but anyway, guys, that is it. It's a nine and a half out of ten. Let's see what To Be Act 1 and To Be Act 2 delivers. But that is it for Sons of Anarchy Season 4, Episode 12. And I totally think I was going to wrap up the season there. No, that's it. I'll catch you in the next one. Nine and a half out of ten. Peace.